A few years ago, journalist Linda Wertheimer spoke of one way she remembered her loved ones who had died. She makes their name the password for her digital devices. She said, the first time I did this was for my mother's name. Linda says, she's been dead for almost 30 years. Like most women from our part of the country, she had two first names. She also had two husbands, making it possible for me to combine and recombine them for years, both for comfort and for security sake. My father was next, she said. I used his names for several years, and each time I typed those names into the computer, he came into my mind. She said, I felt that my passwords were digital insurance against losing all the memories I had of being a child with these two parents, of working with my dad at his grocery store, of learning to cook with my mother, of family stories I had heard from them. When I created new passwords, I put numbers in, ancient phone numbers, dates, combinations that mean something only to me. She concluded her words by telling of a recent death, a close family member who was younger than her when she died. The news of the passing sent her into a bit of an anxiety spiral as she thought about who might be next. But then she said, quote, I got a grip and invited her memory to come in and comfort me. Over the years, I've shared this password custom of Miss Wertheimer's with our congregation. But last year was the first year that I tried it myself. I'm not sure what took me so long in giving it a shot. I guess change takes time, and my passwords had never included deceased loved ones. And I have to say, it's been a positive experience for me. I started with my grandparents of blessed memory and over time included my father's name. It took me a while to get used to such frequent encounters with my grandmothers. Sometimes I thought of their life journeys as I put their names into the screen. And other times I remembered the experiences I had with them when they were alive. And most often I pictured them just with me for that moment of time during the day. And it felt good to think of them and have them with me. I was particularly moved to spend more time thinking about my grandfathers, both of whom died before I was born. My first and middle names were selected to honor and remember them. Thanks, Mom. But neither Maurice or Alan are the exact names that they had. So when I type in their name in the original form or close to it, the name they went by during their entire lives, I think about them and how I'm here, no doubt, in part because of them. Overall, what I found most enjoyable is that as I was unlocking various websites and devices, I was also unlocking a door that connected me to my grandparents in a much more regular way. And in preparing for today, I reached out to some of you in the congregation and other friends and family to learn if any of you do this. And so many of you responded yes, along with additional insights into your practices. One of you wrote, about a year ago, I had to change a password. I happened to keep a picture of my deceased grandmother on my desk. She was a champion, and I was her princess. I looked at her photo, and I looked at my screen, asking for a new password, and said, of course. And she wrote, since then, many iterations of my password are connected to her. I love typing in her name. There is so much meaning to it for me. I look at her photo when I type it in, and I know she's smiling at me. She inspires me daily. Another shared that for his password, he uses variations of the song that his grandparents of blessed memory love to sing most 
at their family Passover Seder. He wrote me saying, the family Seder has a special place in my heart. Saba, his grandfather, would lead. Safta, his grandmother, would hit the high notes and the whole family would roar in song. One song always stood out. And over time, I started making my passwords with variations of the lyrics from this song. Now, each time I type a password, I feel connected to my grandparents. It's my little secret. And just in case you're wondering who wrote this comment, his name is, no, <laughs> just kidding. Your secret is safe with all of us. Other comments. A friend uses the nickname of their deceased loved one that the deceased used to call them, their, their, their term of endearment that they had for this person as their password. A high school classmate told me about her practice with this all saying, at first I thought it would bother me, but I experienced quite the opposite reaction as it keeps them in my everyday thoughts. From another, while I think of my deceased loved ones without needing the password reminder, I like having this little extra secret dialogue with them. And I think they get a kick out of it too. I did hear from a number of you that shared how hard it can be when a website forces them to change the password. One wrote, when this happened, I had to remind myself that the password was not them and that I wasn't being disloyal or letting go of them. I must add that one of my friends, who's an expert in cybersecurity, shared with me, I advise people never use the names of their loved ones, especially relatives, because names are easy to crack. Sadly, his advice is wise. Any passwords that we have should be sophisticated to protect ourselves. So if you decide to give this a go, be sure to carefully compose complicated and complex passwords. Here we are on Simchat Torah, Shmini Atzeret morning, a day with this special Yizkor remembrance liturgy. To be clear, I'm not here to provide computer technical assistance. I am part of the God Squad, not the Geek Squad. I'm here to honor our connections to loved ones no longer alive. Our grandparents, our parents, our sisters, our brothers, uncles and aunts, our spouses and children, and other family and friends who have died. We don't need to have them in our passwords in order to remember them, as we think of them all the time. And boy, do we miss them. We miss their laugh. We miss their hugs. <clears throat> we yearn to hear their voices and sit down for a meal with them. We even miss the things that drove them crazy, drove us crazy about them. Well, some of us miss the things that made us cuckoo. And we often feel a wide range of emotions about their death and not having the opportunity to be with them. It can be hard. Very, very hard. And we are a tradition that remembers them. We are a tradition that honors them. And we do so in many, many ways. We name our children after them. We listen to the music they like to listen to. We talk to them in hope that some way they can hear us. We cook their recipes. We carry on their traditions. We cheer on their teams, many of whom have become our teams. I know many of our loved ones would have been thrilled about the Yankees heading to the World Series, and against the Dodgers, no less. 
Oy vey. What a classic matchup. And yes, we may even carefully add them or items related to them to our passwords as another way to stay close to them, to honor them, to feel connected to them. They were ours and we were theirs. And this will always be true, as will our never-ending love for them. Know who came before, know who came before you, know who came before because of them we're here today do you ever wonder do you wonder where you're from do you wonder who you are do you ever stop to think that so much of you comes from those who came before so much of you 